Amen. Amen. We thank God for yet another beautiful night for what he has planned for us. I know you don't want to spend too much time, um, especially because uh, you are preparing for you know, your visitors and you want to, uh, what do you call it? You have a name for it. You know, uh, make your techie ready and put in the fridge and all the good stuff. So we are going to spend a few minutes just to go into uh, the word. And then after that, maybe we'll sing a couple of songs and call it a night. Because the Lord is with us. Amen. So basically, um, tonight we are following in the steps of our predecessors, uh, people who started right from Monday all the way to yesterday. And Monday, I was blessed. Yesterday, I couldn't come on as soon as I could because of work. But the little part that I uh, enjoyed was sweet. And tonight, I'm going to also allow myself to be used of God in such a short time while we uh, deliberate on the reason for our work. I'll call this title Midnight Praise. Tonight, I'm going to talk about Midnight Praise. Hallelujah or midnight worship, however you will call it. And I derive, I derive this from when House of Money was closing last time, when she tapped on, uh, on the story of uh, Paul and Silas. I'm just going to use that as uh, the base of my um, talk this evening. So uh, before that, let's read something from Psalm 145, verse number 3 to 9. Psalm 145, verse number 3 to 9. Um, if you can read with me, my version says, Great, great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Oh, my goodness. I'll take that again. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. Hallelujah. Verse 4. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. I will meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works. Hallelujah. And the verse 6 is that men shall speak of the might of your awesome acts, and I will declare your greatness. Hallelujah. Amen. Each one of these verses, uh, as our account language, our account language you say, is nunuing me. Hallelujah. It's tickling me, I should say in English, right? Verse 4, <laughs> verse 3, say, Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Of the truth, great is the Lord. Hallelujah. And greatly to be praised. He's not just great, but he, he's so great that he has to be praised, as I was alluding to. He is great and greatly to be praised. And his greatness is unsearchable. You cannot fathom his greatness. You don't know how the bottom is, how the top is, and how the width is. When, when we're in Sunday school, uh, we used to sing a song, like, my God, they so big. So strong and so mighty, there is nothing my God cannot do. You know, we think those songs when we are kids, but when we grow up, we tend to forget. But of the truth, the greatness of God is unsearchable. It is the same yesterday. It is, in fact, it is the same today. It's going to be the same tomorrow. As a matter of fact, the greatness that we have been exposed to, the little bit that we have been exposed to, is just what our understanding can comprehend. He is greater than what we know. Oh my goodness, I don't know if you got that. He is greater than what we know. You know, how great I know God to be is in terms of how my understanding, how my imagination can, can understand, can accept. But he's greater than that. So when I grow to the level where uh, he can show me more, I will know his greatness even more than I know now. Even more than I appreciate now. Hallelujah. 
and that is the great God we serve. And today I want to just I want to just tickle you to be in the spirit and to be able to praise, especially on the eve of Thanksgiving, because that's all it is about, right? Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Now, I'm, we are talking about midnight praise. So let's go to um, Acts chapter number 16. Acts 16. See if I can project that to Acts chapter 16 and verse we can actually start from verse, uh, uh, let's start from verse 16, or maybe even 19. Acts 16. If you are there, you can read for me. Acts 16, let's start from verse, let me see where the 19 is. Uh, uh, please mute your phones. If you are in a uh, place where there is noise, and when we start worshiping, you can. Yes. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Continue. Hmm. Everybody say, but at midnight. No, you didn't get it. I say, say, but at midnight. Okay, and I proceed. Hmm. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Pause right there. Pause right there. We will come back in a, in a minute. But basically, I think we, we all remember the story. But for the benefit of context, let's... I'm just going to talk about a story from the beginning. So uh, this man had a little slave girl who had the spirit of divination or who was able to tell about, you know, divine things or spiritual things. They, they are able to, you know, say certain things that beat people's mind and they used this girl to make money. So they would just, you know, uh, make the girl say certain things about people, you know, and will come to pass and they will collect money. So they were... The, the owner of this slave girl was rich in that respect. And when Paul and Silas and the group of people who, have, you know, uh, who were following Christ were passing, this girl saw them and the spirit in her began to offer the truth. As a matter of fact, she wasn't lying. The spirit was telling the truth. He says that these are the men of God. Listen to them. They are appointed by God. And the Bible says that she kept doing it for days. I was wondering, I was thinking about it, why did it take days before Paul rebuked them? Because she was actually telling the truth. If you are telling the truth, sometimes you are allowed to tell it for as much as possible, for as long as possible. But then uh, it became, what I think at least, is that the, the girl was misplacing praise. She was praising the, the story about telling what, you know, uh, what is about Paul and what about them became more like praising them. And Paul didn't want praise to be misplaced. 
And Silas didn't want praise to be misled, uh, mispraised. I mean, misplaced. Hallelujah. So, after days of, of this girl saying that, listen to them. These are the men of God. You know, these are the huge men of God. These people love God. These people can do miracles. These people, they walk with Jesus. These people are powerful. These people are this. All true, all true. But it was misled. It should be saying something about the God that these people said, rather than praising the people who were following the God. You know, so at some point, Paul got angry. He said, it's enough. Though what you're saying is true. Though what you're saying is, is not, you know, it's not something that hurts us or anything, but it's, it's annoying because you are placing praise in the wrong spot. That is my own take of that story, I mean, on that portion. And then he rebuked that spirit and cast that spirit out. And then as soon as he did that, the men who were profiting of this little girl's uh, gift became offended. Because now they cannot tell stories and make money anymore. I'm pretty sure even when they were saying those things about Paul and Silas, they were making money. You know, people were listening and following, so they were collecting money. Hey, this man is a man of God. Then the man will cash in. You know, you follow Paul, you get your healing. Because it's the girl that told you he's a man of God, they will cash in. But as soon as Paul cast out this demon, the men became angry, which is normal because then they lost their source of income. And not only did they become angry, they decided to chastise and to imprison and to beat, according to our account that we just read, beat them, as some of us, take their clothes off and lay them with, with rods, beat them hard, and then after that, throw them in jail. And that is where the midnight began. At midnight, in verse, uh, verse number 25 of Acts 16, the Bible says that after being beaten, after being made weak, after all that they had gone through, you know, dragging them into the prison where they did not belong. You know, they were just doing the right things. Just cast out a demon and you, you end up in prison. Some of us have been ending up in some places we didn't want to because we cast out some little demon. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, some of the elders, we, you know, sometimes you face challenges and you don't know why. You prayed for somebody and they got gold. They received their blessing. They received their, their unique breakthrough. And now comes a problem for you. Begin to see more enemies. Why? Because you have thrown out somebody from where they used to be. And so that is what they, they felt. But uh, not, notwithstanding, they did not end there. They wanted to actually punish Paul and Silas to the extent that they were dragged into jail and beaten first and dragged into jail. And they knew, you know, the girl already had told them that these men are the men of God. They knew that because of what this girl has already said about these people, we got to put them in a severely secure place, a real dungeon of a prison, because the girl has already said it, and they believed it. Hallelujah. And so Bible says that they put them into the innermost part of the jail making sure that it is so secure. If you actually go to, uh, you know, starting from verse 23, I think, it says that, uh, and, he, and when they had laid many stripes on them, that is, after beating them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely, because they knew. And then having received a, a charge, a child, he put them into the inner prison, so I'm not making it up. They, they securely put them there. They make sure they are secure. And then they put them in the innermost place and fastened their feet in the stocks. So not only are you in jail, you are also tied to the stocks, to the pillars of the jail. So even if your God that you think is big enough, this little girl is saying, comes to deliver you, at least you can leave with the, the, your, your legs still tied to the jail. <laughs> Hallelujah. They did what is humanly possible to ensure that Paul and Silas cannot escape. But at midnight, everybody say at midnight. At midnight. But at midnight. Beloved of God, as we praise, as we learn to praise and worship God, I want to bring you to the place of knowing that when things get harder, whether it is good or bad, create a midnight hour for praise for you. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, one thing, one thing, when I was reading, I also tried to think about why midnight? Because they went there earlier than midnight. Paul and Silas could have done this praise 
thing they did earlier than midnight. But perchance, something in the midnight, in the middle of the night, when people are resting, when people are, 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 are done with their activities, when people are, 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 are the place where they are most comfortable, their beds, when, when people are not challenged or tempted by anything, at that midnight hour, that is when the one who is not comfortable rises up. And you do not just rise up, but you rise up to pray. Hallelujah. You did not just rise up to pray, but you rise up to sing. Hallelujah. I mean, I mean for, me, for me, what I take from that is they did worship. They did prayer and worship. Because the Bible says something there. Let's see how they did. They say that at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns. That is basically worship. Praying and singing hymns is basically worship. So today, as on the eve of Thanksgiving, if you have anything to do, be in the mood of worship. This, this, this morning, if it is in your ability to do, create a midnight hour this night, this, this, this morning, this, this, this early morning today. And at least for the time of celebrating Thanksgiving, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Give God some praise. And regardless of what you are going through, if it is all good and fine, just give him some praise. If it is not all good and fine, just give him some praise and see what he will do at the midnight hour because it did something for Paul and Silas. And I think we are following the steps and, and, and the steps of Paul. Everybody knows how Paul, the great apostle, I, I want to be like Paul, right? You want to be like Paul, I'm sure. So if he did that, then I'm going to copy. I'm going to create for myself a midnight hour, whether it is in the time of difficulty or in the time of greatness or in the time of joy. I want to create a time where most people are comfortably resting, but I, I'll rise up just to worship, just to worship. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure some of the songs that Paul and Silas may have been singing, they said, the Bible says that they were singing hymns. I think they sang a song to God, be the glory, great things he has done. So love he the world that he gave us his son. Oh, who true. An atonement of sin and give us the glory in the floodgates that all Go. Let's start over. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the end of the Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let the people. Who rejoice? Oh, come to the Father, to Jesus, the Son, and give Makataya Sebe and Dorobosia the glory. Great things. So they, they continued to sing the hymns that praise the name of our God. They began to remember the things that Jesus did for them. And they began to cheer themselves up. You know, at this time, I, we are not in prison. Of course, you may be in your own little prison that you alone know. Especially you and God knows. You may be in a little prison that, you know, it's not shareable. Some prisons you can't share. You know, some people find it difficult even to talk to their pastors or pastors' wives about some issues because they feel it's too personal. But in that little prison, if you can remember that there is a God, just rise up at the midnight hour. You don't need to always talk to God and say, God, I have the prison. He knows. He knows when Paul and Silas were there. They didn't need to say, God, we are in prison. He was with them when they went to the prison. And so all they needed to do was to acknowledge the presence of God by singing his praises, by singing his thanks, by singing hymns. 
and acknowledging that God can deliver them. Hallelujah. Amen. So this, 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 this evening, no matter the kind of prison you are in, remember, create a midnight hour. And your, for your family, create a midnight hour. When the times are good, when the times are bad, create a midnight hour. Set that alarm. Literally speaking, I'm talking about real time, not saying something, you know, uh, uh, theoretical. Create a time of the late hour, around whatever time you can get most of your family together. And do not use that time to ask God for anything. I would want to try this, this technique of Paul Silas and see if the hand of the Lord, if that presence will come like it came, hallelujah, during the time. The Bible says that when, when, when the praises went up higher, the foundations of the jail were broken, were, 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 were shaken. Foundations can be shaken when set at the midnight hour. Foundations can be moved. You know, when we talk about foundations, foundations are the stuff upon which many great things stand. So if you want to talk about the skyscrapers of New York City or wherever, the, the strongest places of that building is in the foundation. Because the foundation is the one that carries the entire building. It could be a 30-story building. It could be a 50, 100. The greatest place for the weight to bear is in the foundation. And the Bible says that when the praise and the worship and the hymns began to rise, the foundations are the ones that began to shake. Not just the building, but the foundations. So I don't know the kind of problems, but the foundations of your problems are going to shake when you begin to create that midnight hour of praise. Ah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but whatever it is that you're going through, create that midnight hour. Don't tell God, ask God for that thing, but give God that thing. Hallelujah. Give God that praise. Don't ask him anything, but give him that praise. On this Thanksgiving day, tomorrow, celebrate it with Thanksgiving with praising, wake up in the morning and just make the name of the Lord greater. And after that, just enjoy. Pretend like there's nothing, uh, uh, you know, bothering you. That that problem is already gone. And in fact, it will go because you have lifted up a prayer, a song, and a hymn at the midnight hour because that's what God wants to see. And when he sees that, he cannot sit and be just God sitting. He will rise and do what God do. Oh, my katayabe. Reza bundere Come on, speak in tongues. Speak in tongues with me. Mado rebe si yande rebo. Bozo kata bre makata yebe zande rebe. Re makata ya baba basondo robo sakata. Re bebe makete ebe si yande rebo. Bozo kuto karabasiya. Rama kate bebe masakata ya bo. Bondo robo si yakate ebe dere masakata ye. Re ma baba basondo robo si ya. Living God, we lift your name on high. Yea, at the midnight hour, at the hour of sleep when many are resting we will rise and give you the praise we will not recognize what we're going to do we will just lift up a hymn we just lift up a song and say that you are god even as we do now Re masakate beziandere masakata by ebro sokoto oboziandere makata in the name of jesus in the name of jesus at the midnight hour at the midnight hour makata ya sandere mo Amen. The other thing that happened at the midnight hour in that little jail of theirs is that the, 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 the doors were open. Doors were open. Doors were open. Verse 26. And Prasadna you know, touched something that also touched me last time, last Monday. He said that in Jericho, when the battle was being fought, it wasn't about you know, being strong and bulldozing the, the, the walls of Jericho. It was about singing praise. It was about worshiping God and watching God do the battle for you. Hallelujah. And so in the prison, when Paul and Silas were there, when nobody thought they could come out because they had, they had securely secured them, they had put them in the innermost part of the jail. Oh, nobody thought doors could be open. This morning, this evening, doors that are close to you are going to open because you lifted up praise. Because of your praise, because of your worship, as if nothing is happening. Oh, because you do not look on the problems, but you look on your God. Because you do not cherish and lift the name of your problem above your God. Oh, doors that have been shut for years are going to open. Because that is what he does when he comes down in praise. Hey, Masakaya. At the midnight hour, at the midnight hour, just like in Jericho, the prison doors are going to be open. 
Doors of opportunities are going to be open for you. Doors that are locked for years, even for your parents. Your parents did not, were not able to walk through those doors. You are going to walk through them. And the reason is not because you pay more than them. The reason is not because you are holier than them. The reason is not because you are, you are, you are favored in any way better than them. You are more beautiful. No, 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 no. The reason is because you praise more than them. Because you worship more than them. Oh, if your parents used to worship one hour, if you want to do above what they did, you got to go the extra mile and do one and a half hours, two hours. Hallelujah. Because that is where the door is beginning to uh, open, break down for you. Hallelujah. Doors will be open when you begin to praise. And, to, and this Thanksgiving, I want, you, I want to challenge you. I want you to praise and worship God like never before. Uh, I want you to begin to see yourself like, as a praiser. Create that midnight hour. Wherever it is, whatever time you can, and make sure you lift up praise because God needs our praise. The only thing that God needs from us, beloved, is not your money, it's not your, your holiness. Look, let me let me tell you something. Let me just bring your uh, your mind to you. I've studied the life of David. I always talk about David, those of you who have listened to me before. David is not the Bible says that he is a man of God's own heart, right? I, I can tell you right now that I am better in terms of holiness than David. I thought about this before coming. I'm like, hey, God, if I say this, is it good? But I'm going to say it. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am, come on, I haven't killed anybody's wife. How about? I haven't, first of all, I haven't slept with anybody's wife. I haven't had baby with anybody's wife. I haven't killed anybody's husband. Have I done them? I haven't. So, morally speaking, am I not better than David? But why can God say about David? That he is a man of his own heart. You know the reason? Look at all the Psalms, all the praise, all even the Psalm 145, we just read. This man was a man of praise, a man of worship. He created times and hours of worship unto our God. And so God could not look on his sin anymore. He could told him that he is a man of his heart. What does it mean to say he's a man of your heart? A man that loves you, a man that you love. And the only way we know God that we love, we love him, is when we give him our praise. When we give him our worship, when we give him our gratitude, when we tell him that we love him and love him and love him through songs, through hymns, and through all the worship that we do. Hallelujah. Then God will still about us. Hallelujah. The next thing we are wrapping up, and we will just uh, close by 8.30, we should be done. The next thing is that when praise and worship is given at the midnight hour, God sets your enemies in desperation and in confusion. So those presiding also said something. He said that when it comes to prayer and say bind and demons, oh, that is where we, we, we do all the screaming. We do all the screaming. I, when I, I was back in where I came from, we used to go to the park in the middle of the night, sometimes at dawn, four o'clock, and all we did was just bind and loose. Some of us were even heard. I wish I knew this. I, I knew this at that time. Use that time just to worship God for two hours. Oh my God. The hand of the Lord would have come down and all the problems would be gone. We wasted time binding and losing. We're already over them. We already, Jesus had already conquered. We are already overcomers. We don't need to spend that time. Because when praise and worship went up higher, the Bible says, according to the episode that we've read in, in, in uh, Acts 16, that the enemies were set in trouble. The, the jailer who was there, the Bible says that when you saw, the place and shaking and everything, the, all the doors opening. He thought that Paul and Silas had run away. And so he took a knife, was going to kill himself. He's confused. He's confused. That's what the, God, God does to our enemies when our praises rise up. When your worship rises up, that's how God sets your enemies. They become confused. And in fact, there are several accounts in the Old Testament in which God did the same to the people of Israel. He confuses the, the, the enemy and the people themselves fought against themselves and then the Israelites got their freedom. So set up higher praise unto God. Create that midnight hour of praise and watch God confuse your enemies. They will fight among themselves. You don't need to bind. They will bind themselves. <laughs> they will bind themselves. The witches and wizards who are against you, they will begin to do themselves and then you'll be just living your life. Hallelujah. Don't spend any minute binding. It is good. Sometimes, you know, you got to do it. But don't overdo it. I would, I would rather use those times to worship. I would rather use those times to worship. And let God do the battle. Because that is what he does best when he comes down. When he comes down, he will fight your battles for you. Hallelujah. At the midnight hour, he will come. And when he comes, if somebody is against you, 
as uh, I know it, and it's a great uh, scripture in Romans. If God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? And the only way you know and are assured of God being for you is when your praise is up. When your praises go up. God himself, the Bible says that he, 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 he inhabits the praise of his people and he begins to come down. When he comes down and he is with you, oh, who can be against you? Your enemies will be forever confounded. They will be confused. They will be made to terminate them, themselves in their own machinations. The traps that they set will ensnare themselves because of the midnight praise. They will self-destruct. They will self-destruct. Hallelujah. I want you to just begin to worship God. We are, we are, we are closing now. Within the next, the next uh, 18 minutes, we're going to close. Makata ya basan lorobo. Brez ya kebe anderebo samababa. Rasa bakate maye mandorobo sukutu andorobo. Great is your faithfulness, O God. Make ebe si anderebo. Maso kababa basan derebe. Raza makate maye kebe masokutu oboson dorobo. Mazaka bre anderebo sakata ya mabe. In the name of Jesus, oh, at the midnight hour, Lord, we we'll lift up praise. We we'll lift up praise. We we'll lift up worship. We adore you. We bless you. We glorify you. We magnify your holy name. Rasoki be andere masakata lebebe masanku to abuswa kaye bebe masanka te brial norobo mozo bobosia mende debe kitaya masa. We worship your majesty, O God. Great I am is your name. You alone are God. There is none that can compare unto you in might, in power, in beauty, in glory, in majesty, in truth, in honesty, in love, in beauty, in wisdom, O God, in power, in authority. None can compare unto you, Lord. This evening we lift up praise, we lift up praise, we lift up praise. Resa kabondere masaka te zebre sankata kabo soando robo mozobre makate bebe zande rebe rasa kata ye mabo sande rebo bokabra sankata abende rebo siya. In the name of Jesus, we magnify your name, we glorify your name, we worship your name, we adore your name, we praise your name, we say thank you, thank you, thank you, our God for none is comparable unto you. You are in the God of, of a class that none can compare. Your class is unique to you because you alone are God. Mm. Bendebe sakate ya be sakuto wanderebo wasokuto kubro wasin bendebe mekete masankata akataya yebebe sakuto broa masokuto ondorobo wasokabre masankata kabe rebebe sankata yebe andorobo wasokabre bendebe we worship your Majesty Great I am we worship your Majesty Great I am none is comparable unto you you alone are God and worthy of our praise you alone are God. And worthy of our praise, Masakataya Sande Rebosia. As dead year pampered for the war, it's so my soul longed after thee. Oh, you are my heart. Desire to worship you as dead year, as dead year, that for oh, the water so my soul longed for you alone, you alone are my heart, desire to worship you. You alone, you alone are my strength. My child, you alone make my spirit 
Thy faithfulness, O oh Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of turning. Rasu kailande rebusi in you, O Thy gentleness. Thy compassion, they Great as thou hast been, O oh, thou forever would be. O oh, great is thy faithfulness, Sakaya. O oh, great is Thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercy, I see, oh, oh I see, as provided, grave is thy faithfulness, grave is thy faithfulness, I say, great is thy faith. My yes, I take and Lord of Osia. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning. By morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, Lord, unto great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, unto 
Great is thy faithfulness. Oh, my Jesus. Love thee. I know thou my mm. oh for thee oh, 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 holy oh, 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 my gracious lady. Hey, Oh, my dear. Hey, I love you, my Jesus. Oh, beloved, I want you to sing it with meaning. My gracious, oh, Redeemer, my Savior. I die forever. I love you, my Jesus. Come on, let's take it again. My gracious, my gracious redeemer, redeemer. My Savior, oh, I love you, my What a friend we have in Jesus. Ah. Oh. Our sins and griefs to bear. Come on, sing him, sing to him a hymn. Sing to him a hymn. Oh, oh, what the peace I look at. Everything to God. I want you to lift your your open your mouth. Thank you. Worship Him right now. Maso kibre zebre makata ya baba sondurobo kuzebre makia nderebo sakata. Lebo bosi ane we. Oh, what we do, okay. Open your mouth and say something sweet to God. Tell Him you love Him. Lambo say, say, Lord, I love you. I thank you. I love you. I worship you. Oh, I'm here because of you and this. For this reason, I thank you. For this reason, I worship you. For this reason, I magnify you. You alone are God. You are the lifter up of my head in the midst of my enemies. Hey, you set a table before me in the presence of my enemies. It is you who have done this. It is you who keeps us. It is you who lifts us. It is you who loves us. It is you, O oh God, who makes us who we are. None, 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 none loves us like you do. You are a gracious God. You are a merciful Father. You are a kind God. And you are a good God. 
You are a good God. You are good, you are good, you are good, you are good, you are good and your mercies for uh, endure forever. Lord, you are good. None is like thee. You are the great I am. You are the God divine who cares about people like us. We love you. We love you. We bless you. We honor you. We magnify your name in the name of Jesus. Masakataya. Reboso kuton lorobosia. Rasakata kabande rebo. Lebebebe maseke yaba Raso kutu. Lord, you are good. Lord, you are good. And your mercies endure forever and ever. And ever and never. We sing this last hymn and then we win. To God be the glory, great things He has done. To love be the well that He gave us the sun. That is life by atonement of sin for sin. Mm. Mm. And no pain, no pain the blood gives. That all may be good. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, let the earth my sepia masukute. Oh, let all the air, let all the air lift up praise. All the air, all the four corners of the air, lift up praise, lift up praise to our God, lift up praise to our Maker. Oh, to the Maker of you and I, to the Maker of us, to the Maker, to the Maker, lift up praise. Oh. To the Father, through Jesus, the Son, oh, and gave him the glory. He has, oh, and gave him. Of a truth, O oh God, you deserve the praise. You deserve 24 hour praise, O oh God. 24 hours, 7 days a week, 31 days a month, 366 days a year. Lord, you deserve all praise. All praise, all praise, because you are good and because you are God. None can praise to you. Father, if ever there is any gratitude, if ever there is any praise in to you first before to man, oh, we will act like that little girl in who praise men of you and, you know, and, and forget about where the praise should actually be. We won't be like anyone else who forgets about what you do. We will remember, oh God, help us, that we will remember every day your handiwork on our lives, in us and for us and through us, oh God. From the beginning of the year 2022, all through to this day, even the, on the eve of Thanksgiving, if we have any Thanksgiving and gratitude, it is first to you. We ascribe unto you all praise, all honor, all glory, all majesty, all adoration, all the other words of God. You deserve it all. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you for this session, for being with us. We thank you for celebrating with us this beautiful day and this beautiful holiday. In Jesus' name, amen.